Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. A little while back I was filming a video with Joe from Survival Attitude. We had a whole bunch of Essies out for some field use and well in that video I got my hands for the first time on the Essie Laser Strike. Now this is a knife that absolutely blew me away in terms of general capability and performance. I wanted my own, shopped around a little bit, found one on the used market, got myself a pretty nice model here. Pretty good condition, all things considered. Looks to still have roughly a fairly sharp factory edge, a little bit of wear on the side of the coating, but not a big deal. And so I got to thinking, you know what? I like this so much. Why not put a little bit into this? Why not upgrade it a bit? And a great place to start for SE knives, well, you can get some pretty nice handle scales from the knife connection. Most of you watching this today probably realize that, but for me, it's a great opportunity to get these out today. Just kind of hanging out, having a nice lazy day. Figured I'd tweak on my blades and get these scales put onto my SE Laser Strike. So with that, let's flip the camera around and let's upgrade this bad boy. And so as we go through this process, this is not really so much a video on the Laser Strike itself, but rather upgrading the Laser Strike with the new handle scales. But while we're at it, I figured some people might have some questions along the way. Now, personally for me, I'm not terribly concerned with weight. That's not really criteria that I personally care about. But if you are somebody that does care, you may wonder what making these changes does to the weight of the knife. So as I get it onto the scale here, you will see this weighs in with the factory scales at 9.3 ounces. Now I'm not going to weigh the sheath because the sheath is going to be consistent between uh, both setups here. But I figure as we get into this, let's see what happens once we swap out for the knife connection scales. And just for the sake of the argument, as I get the knife now fitted into the original factory sheath, nice positive click, no rattle. That's just this kind of jangling around. So you'll see here, no rattle. It's not going to fall out. Everything about this perfect and fitting extremely well. So in terms of the fit into the factory sheath, it is of course, literally perfect. And so now as we get into this, you can see on the laser strike, this does require a flathead screwdriver inside the scales here. It has been hollowed out and skeletonized to allow for a bit of a survival kit. And so with the flathead here, should be pretty straightforward getting on these and loosening them up. If they do spin on you, you might need two screwdrivers, but I think I can get these off as it is with only one. And yes, this is going to be very simple. So from a disassembly standpoint, very straightforward, very simple. And where I got this used, I'm curious. I wonder if there's anything in here, because if there is, we may have to measure up again, but let's take a quick look. Ooh, and there are some goodies in here. So as we take a look, what is in here? All right, so a little, what seems to be magnesium rod and a ferro rod. So real small magnesium rod and ferro rod and a couple of tinder quicks. So these will actually go back in the handle. So I'm curious now if these items will fit. So we'll hold these aside. And of course that will weigh in on the measurement of the weight at the end. And so as we take a look, this is the skeletonized handle. So working very well, you'll notice the coating does go all the way underneath the handle to keep it protected. And something that I do need to note, I did a little bit more research just to make sure I was clear. And this actually is part of the factory setup. So this does come from the factory inside. So it'll be interesting to see how this works out with the aftermarket scales. And as we take a look at the factory scales, you can see here, these are my Carta. Now looking, I, and I'm not the best at identifying the exact type of micarta. I want to say this seems to me to be a type of burlap, like a tight weave, maybe burlap or canvas. It's probably more like a canvas micarta, but you can see it is skeletonized inside and hollowed out to accommodate 
that little fire starting kit. So very cool. And the other thing that heh, I realized is this had actually a washer on it, which was the intended tool to remove the scales. But I had taken the washer off because it was jangling around. And I don't know. I have it. I'll probably put it back on. And in retrospect, that's just me not thinking or paying attention to the details, which is not usually the norm. But as I slide all the factory components to the side at this point, breaking out the laser strike aftermarket knife connection scales, you'll notice, oh, beautiful. So a nice large cutout in this particular case. And as we get the hardware out, I'm curious if these are slotted or if they require a hex key. So this will be kind of neat to see. And taking a look here, they are slotted. So perfect. So I need to absolutely get my washer back on here without a doubt. But as we take a look at the knife connection scales, these now are in G10. So unlike the factory scales, which were my Carta, the aftermarket scales here in G10. And you'll notice I went with OD green with that orange liner for some pop. It's gonna stick off the tang of the knife beautifully. And I love this color combination. Just like the factory scales, this does have a bow drill divot and it is only on one side. But interestingly, if we look, here is the left-hand side scale. So the left-hand scale on the aftermarket has the bow drill divot where it's the right-hand scale on the factory scales that had the bow drill divot in the first place. So a little bit of a difference there, but as we take a look at these in profile, you'll notice the biggest difference and what really gets me is the aftermarket scales with that nice palm swell, a little more contour, a little more shapey, which should aid in long-term comfort while you're using these in the field. Now, another thing that I greatly like is handle scales with scallops. And you'll notice too that the uh, knife connection scales do have scallops, which is awesome. So that makes it a little bit easier to grab and hold onto for alternate grips like pinch grips or something like that. Now I am going to have a couple of just subtle little gripes. You know, I, I don't really like that in this particular location, they punched through the OD green and into the orange. It is subtle enough that in my opinion, they should have absolutely been able to avoid the orange. And if you look, I mean, they barely kissed off that OD green. So it's not like it would have made a difference, but from a fit and finish and just a look and completeness perspective, I would have liked this better not to have that little bit of orange showing there. I think it would have looked better. And that's the case also on the leading edge of the scallops where they go a little bit deep there and it ends up kind of biting into the orange to me, that's just a little bit sloppy. Uh, I don't know. I mean, as a knife designer and somebody who is a stickler for fit and finish, that just kind of bugs me. So if I was the designer of this, I'd be like, guys, you got to take that back, you know, whatever. It's not even a millimeter. I mean, I'm talking, you know, a couple thousand, you'd be good. So anyway, in my opinion, just a little bit sloppy on the actual manufacturing. And just as a matter of paying attention to the details, you'll notice that these inside barrel spacers are slightly different length. So you end up with one that's made for the rear of the knife and then one that's made more towards the Ricasso area. So in that regard, the actual sort of swell up towards your scallop is a little bit wider. The longer spacer will go right here. And so as we get this started, should be fairly straightforward. Now, personally for me, I'm not too worried about rust or anything like that. Some people do like to put uh, some level of grease or, you know, whatever, lubricant or something beneath their actual scales. For me, I don't personally care. So I'm just going to get this started here, set into place, stick it through the tang. And at this point... We can get our little fire kit in here, which is cool. Getting both front and rear posts roughly into place. And then this nested very, very easily, very nicely and set down right and inside. So that's going to go fairly simple. I don't see any interference. And in fact, I could probably even load this out even more if I wanted to. And especially since the aftermarket scales have a little bit of extra room in there which is really nice. But setting this down and into place, that's gonna fit 
just fine and establishing my screws. Don't anticipate needing two tools, but it is possible. And right away, I am really digging the way this looks. I love the bright orange popping off of the black tang with that OD green on the outside. It's a fantastic look, absolutely amazing. And right away, I love the grippiness and the feel of these scales. They feel absolutely awesome. Just getting these roughly into place. I might need to finagle it around just a little bit, so I'm not gonna crank down on everything, but getting a good feel here right away, that is awesome. I mean, look at these, just beautiful. Look great, I love it. And oh, inside that thing's rattling around. That's gonna drive me crazy. That's gonna drive me absolutely nuts. So I have to make a little bit of an adjustment because if my knife is rattling, I am not going to enjoy that at all. And so I do have a solution to actually take care of the fact that this is now rattling on the inside. But what that means is I have to add something to this. So that means my measurement for weight is gonna be thrown off. So what I need to do now is take a quick step back and break out the scale again. We're gonna put the knife, the tinder, and the original scales back up on here for the example, which again, weigh in at 9.3 ounces. But now removing the hardware and the scales and putting the new scales and new hardware weighing in at 9.5, it's dancing to 9.6 ounces. So it's in the range 9.5 to 9.6. I'm gonna call it 9.6 because it's on the edge, which is definitely interesting. So what that means is the G10 either has, you know, more of it, which is possible, or it's a little bit denser and has a little bit more mass. So all things considered, just interesting. And I thought if you were somebody counting ounces, you may at least want to have that data point. But now, now that I'm moving forward, how am I going to stop that rattle? Well, I have this tinder source called Fiberlite. I use this all the time. I covered it on my channel and you just pinch some and squash it into a container. And so what I'm going to do is get everything back and established here. And then I'm just going to pack the cavity space with my fiber light and have even more tinder at my disposal. It should absolutely prevent everything from rattling and I think that's gonna work out mighty nice. And so now that I have these big open hollows, I can just get some of this laid in here pretty easy. You'll notice this stuff packs down beautifully. It's like a wax impregnated fill, which just really does pack literally perfectly and I can get it down and inside without too much extra over the edges filling in just that carved out void space now setting the knife on there that works well getting my little tinder quicks down and into place now you'll notice there is a gap in the middle so if I want to be just complete and really maximize the total amount of tinder. I can now squash that in there. And just press that down nice and firm. And even for a very small void space, that's actually a couple of fires worth of tinder. So if you're careful, this can really maximize your potential to start not just one, but a number of fires. Doing the same thing on the back side here, filling in this space. And you'll notice I got a good amount of product in here. I hope this all goes together, but I don't see me having any problem with this. And this is way more of the fiber light than I really ever thought I was gonna be able to fit. I and mean, this is a huge amount of product. I, I literally have, I would say no less than 10 or 12 solid fires worth of tinder here. And that's assuming I'm able to carefully prepare and process my wood prior to a fire, depending on how adverse the conditions might be. Of course, again, going back to my statement, if you're counting ounces, I'm now adding more ounces, but I also said 
I don't care. But the other thing this is doing, it's shifting the handle to blade balance ratio, which is another consideration. This is now obviously going to be a little more handle weighted, which some people might like, some people might not. For a knife of this size, it doesn't really bother me. And I think having a little bit of a denser feel is going to actually work to my advantage. So I think I am going to like this. But with that, this is pretty well packed. Careful now to flip this over and get it into place. Squashing this down effectively with the bolts is now really going to matter. But just getting them established here so that I can slide the scales around and line them all up. Just getting everything aligned with the tang of the knife. Now it is go time. So crank this down. And on both sides. This side's already pretty good to go because I tighten these pretty much all the way. And at this point, awesome. Now, could I get really funky and mess around and tweak things out and try to get the slots oriented horizontally and perfect? Sure. Let's just say this is a survival wilderness blade. I really don't care. And at this point, that feels really stout and firm and dense. And it does shift the balance a little bit. But as you take a look here, it's still very neutrally balanced. In fact, right on that pinch point, it still almost wants to lean forward towards the blade. So I actually think that all things considered, I left this in a very neutrally balanced state, which is like the perfect world. So execution wise, I'm actually pretty stoked. This worked out very well. And taking a look now, you can see excellent ergonomics, all things considered. That nice palm swell, everything fitting fairly well to the tang of the knife. Maybe a little bit of lip in a couple of spots, but not a big deal. And grabbing onto this, contouring very nicely, feeling excellent up through the choil. Full fingered grip, feeling wonderful. And this absolutely looking the part. So this laser strike, for my needs, is ready for some field use. And so the only last thing that's going to impact my ability to get this out into the field is, well, the retention in the sheath, the moment of truth. Tight. But good. It's good. In fact, it's tighter than it was, and that's better. So as you look here, and it's going to be subtle, and you're probably not realistically going to be able to see this, but the factory scales were very square, so they were flat in this area, where this is now coming through the scallops, which is a bit of a ramp. It's going to spread the sheath, as you see here pushing, and then it clicks in. And that's okay. I'm good with that. And on top of all of this, you have the additional retention if you need it. So that could be slid and really dial this in. But that to me, extremely firm and trustworthy. And that's awesome. So this to me really is now a viable option for an inverted carry, which would be freaking awesome. This is literally perfect. Get a clip, put the clip on, kind of like a tech lock clip, get it onto a pack strap, carry it inverted right there. If you need the extra retention, slide that down while you're hiking, slide the retention out of the way, pop the knife out, but boom, you're on the trails, do your thing, carve your apple, cut a couple things, slide it back in. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. So this worked out very well. And I like the dense feel of the handle actually feels really good, a nice balance. And it's substantial, not overly weighted, just substantial feels really good. The palm swells awesome. I am pumped to get this to some good field use. And the only thing left for me, well, maybe just a little bit of a leather strop and a couple simple passes on a fine ceramic rod. And this thing is going to be absolutely perfect for field use. And so, all right, guys, there you have it. A look at the SE Laser Strike. Just swapping out my scales from the factory Micarta to now the Knife Connection G10. Really cool, all things considered. I greatly like this. I think the people at the Knife Connection could do just one thing, and that's cut back on the depth 
of the milling just to avoid the liner. Just keep it a thousandth over the liner and you get that full, complete, just detailed look. To me, this is just a little bit sloppy, but that's just my personal opinion. But overall, you can't really fight the fact that these feel quality, the ergonomics are there. It's an excellent looking knife, all things considered, and there's a ton of different options. So if you like these scales, lots of different options out there, different, actually, materials. I believe they also have burlap, micarta, number of different G10 variants. Really, really cool. So check out the Knife Connection. Get yourself some aftermarket scales. And if you like this content, do me a favor. Take a look at my Outer Limitless 2 channel, which is more on the tactical and firearm side of things. At this point, that channel is growing quickly. I have a ton of videos up there. So if you like what you see here on Outer Limitless, do me a favor and check me out on Outer Limitless 2. So, all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.